Okay, I just wanted to do a quick demonstration of how to work with the Cengage Mind Tap <laughs> exercises. Uh, the technical term for that is a sandbox. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that. The Mind Tap exercises are here under the practice module. And so if I click on that on Moodle, it'll go there and you'll see uh, that they are there and they're kind of sorted by mission. Remember, you do not have to have them all completed uh, within the time frame that we're working on those missions. All of these MindTap exercises are available throughout the semester um, and may be completed any time before the Sunday before the uh, finals week. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. <laughs> this is the only one that does not have a submission button to it. Um, and so you just get credit for that one for free. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how that works. So clicking on that opens up a new tab and uh, sends us to the Cengage site. And you kind of have to be a little patient. It's going to load in your dashboard and then quickly it jumps to uh, this screen, which I think is kind of interesting that it goes here and because um, it doesn't really seem like it, there's a lot here. I suppose this is where, where there would be notes if there were notes, but there aren't. So just go ahead and quickly click on start. And it's going to spin and load that in. And you're going to see it's actually going to create three sections. So you can see it's uh, setting up the sandbox on the right hand side. On the left hand side is a set of instructions. So while it's loading there, we can kind of talk about this. Um, basically what it wants you to do is to make a big letter H. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. So when <laughs> the sandbox opens up, it looks like we're going to get it now, <laughs> we can actually make that. So bing, bing, bing. Okay, so here we go. And so you can see this is C-sharp code. And um, one of the things to note that if you've been kind of watching my uh, videos and been using Visual Studio, is that by default, when Video Stu Visual Studio sets up a C Sharp application, they don't include this dot console. And what that means is, is that um, when we work uh, in Visual Studio and we want to actually kind of display a line, we have to type in console dot right line and in this case let's go ahead and put that first row in there so it looks like an H and let's see if I get this right ding 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 you have to have the sound effect guys there we go and if we put this there now it's gonna work for us even with that so let me go ahead and run that and if we come down here we can kind of run and it says Cannot open assembly, bigletter.com, no such file or directory exists. Okay, so let's just see. I don't think this is causing it. We don't need that, but. Okay, that was very interesting. Okay, so, well, we've learned something here. And I'm just going to keep it in this video because it's good to know. Um, as I said, we normally have to put uh, in Visual Studio, the way it's set up, we have to put the console dot. Notice that the console dot is up here. And so because it's up here, it's available all through the code. So it kind of saves us that. It's interesting. I would have thought it would have provided us a different error message than it did. So anyways, know that that's there. Um, I like to tab that. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to kind of clean this up really quick. And I'll just kind of copy and paste and cheat. Um, you're more than welcome to copy and paste. It's always better to uh, type it in because you learn more. But uh, for the sake of this demo, we'll just kind of go ahead. Let me see. One, two. looks like there's three of these on the bottom. Okay. So we're going to do that. I'm just kind of lining things up. And it looks like i got to put some capital H's in here. Okay. So anyways, <laughs> this is the code that is going to give us this output. And so if I click here, we're good to go. Now, <laughs> this is not, um, this, app, this exercise is not 
checked and it's therefore not recorded. If you click here on workspace, basically what happens is it just gives you a little more room. But this goes back to the direction. So this, this right here blocks that out. All right, so that's real quickly um, what it looks like. Now, just I'll show you this is if you come up here and you close this. So you're in this programming exercise 1.5. And if you close this, it's going to jump you back to your dashboard. And so this is the dashboard in Cengage. You probably have already been here. But if not, you can see that here's our mission one intro to programming. And so that's chapter one. These guys are actually broken out by chapters, but I have them correlated to um, I just noticed something. It says missing. Interesting. I have to fix that. Um, and uh, so actually, you know what? We're going to do this together here. Now we're not. Um, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> I'm just going to start all over. Dogs. <laughs> okay, here we are back at our dashboard. And I have fixed my typo. They all say mission now rather than missing. That's kind of an interesting typo. All right, so what I want to do now is to show you a assignment, uh, an exercise in Cengage MindTap uh, where you will actually kind of use the function of the sandbox to test and make sure that you have kind of coded that up correctly and it's kind of kicking out the right output. So let's go ahead and jump into the next one. So that's going to be, oop, not making decisions, it's going to be right here. Working with data, and we're going to go to exercise 2.2 or 2-2. Brings us to our notes. Click past that. Uh, we will wait with anticipation for the sandbox to open very quick. It's always nice to do this in the morning before it gets busy. Um, and if we take a look at what it asks us to do, it says write a C-sharp program, and it should be called inches to centimeters. And you can see that they've already kind of taken care of that for us, so that's nice. And then it says to declare a constant that holds the number of centimeters in an inch, and that actually that value is 2.54. And then we need to declare another variable that will represent a measurement or hold the number of inches and give it a value. And then what we need to do is to display a message that uh, echoes the number of inches we were given, and it does the conversion and tells us how many centimeters. Okay, so let's go ahead and code that up. So if we come over here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of create that constant, and we create constants by, oh, I got my cap locks on, uh, we create constants by telling uh, the compiler, okay, telling the program that, hey, you know what, I'm going to give you a constant. Now, the convention for constants, naming constants, is uh, that we, again, always use good names. We use uppercase, uh, all the letters are uppercase, and then we separate words with underscores. So um, a good name for this one would be centimeters underscore per inch, like that. Take my cap off, and equals 2.54. Always remember your semicolon and oops, got an extra thing in there, bounced. And so now the next thing is we need to create a variable to hold the number of inches. And oh, you know what? That brings me, I forgot a really important thing. So not only do I have to tell it it's a constant, but I also have to tell it what kind of a constant it is. And I'm going to choose double because this thing has a decimal in it. If we had integer in there, we would not be able to um, give it a decimal value. And with that said, um, even though they're kind of talking about inches being three, we really don't know. And we could certainly have some decimal value of inches. So let's go ahead and use a double value for inches again. And we'll set that equal to, for one, for now, we'll just set it equal to three. We can change that anytime we want. And in fact, down the road, we'll have an exercise. We'll ask the user to do that. And then I'm going to come down here. And I like to kind of clump my variables in one spot, give myself a space, and then move on. And so the next thing we need to do is to create this output right there. And I have to tell you, I'm not really sure whether we include the period or not. So we're going to find that, find out about that. But that'll be a good learning experience. So um, remember, we don't have to use the word console because it's up here. So we don't have to put console dot right line. We can just start with 
uh, right line, and I am going to use the squiggly bracket zero, squiggly bracket one format. You can use whichever format you feel comfortable with. Uh, the testing program is going to pay attention to the output uh, character by character, but it doesn't really care how you get to that output. So, all right, so let's go ahead and so squiggly bracket zero, and that's going to be the number of inches. So inches is, and then we're going to do a squiggly bracket one, and that'll be the second value, and that will be in centimeters like that. Okay. And I think, trying to decide to leave the period on or not, I'm going to leave it off for now and just see what happens. Okay, so then we put a comma in here and we tell the um, compiler, we basically tell it, hey, this is what you're going to substitute in for the zero, and then we'll have a comma and we'll substitute something else in for the one. So the thing we're going to substitute in for the zero is inches. And the thing we're going to substitute in for the 1 is actually a little bit of math we're going to have to do. So that's going to be inches, and then we're going to have to multiply that inches by, put my cap lock on here, centimeters per underscore inch, like that. Okay, and I'll put that off. All right, so let's take a look at this again. So I have my constant. It's a double. It's called centimeters per inch. I've given it a value. I have a variable. Okay, doesn't have constant in front of it. It's a double. I call it inches, and I set its value equal to three. And then we have a. I'm going to kind of fix this because just so it all lines up like that. Uh, then we have a right line statement, and we have uh, something we're going to substitute in. In this case, it's going to be inches, so it should be three inches is. And something we're going to substitute in, and that's inches times centimeters per inch. And that'll get plugged in there in centimeters. So let's go ahead and run this thing and see what it looks like. There we go. Uh, three inches is 7.62 centimeters. So that's what that is right there. It looks like we have it, but we have to test it. And so we're going to kind of come down here. You can see how it has tasks. These little check buttons, and they kind of are tests it's going to run. So it's going to run two tests. It's going to make sure that we've actually declared um, a constant value. Okay. And then on top of that, it's going to make sure that we get the output that we want. So let's go ahead and run our checks. Looks like we declared a constant, and it looks like our output is correct. So it looks, it looks as if my assumption was good. Let me show you what happens if, for some reason, I made this a little typo. I made that 5.5. Five. Now let's run the checks. Okay. And you're going to see a couple things. One is you're going to see that uh, if I open this up um, and then I can expand this, uh, it's going to see, you can see that it's actually looking. This is just kind of fancy stuff, but it's giving you some information here. Um, this is what it uses to make sure that that value was put in there correctly. Okay, and then when we run this, obviously, if the conversion factor is not there, that's not going to be right. So let's go ahead now and switch this back. And let's say that I made a typo and I am notorious for typos. Or let's say that I assumed that there should be a period there. Let's see if it um, throws it out on that period. So let's go ahead and run that check. Aha! It didn't care about the period. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so it's happy with that. All right, well, let's go ahead and actually create a typo. Let's say that I forgot that there should be inches in there. Let's see if it's actually checking each of those characters before. So let's go ahead and run that. Aha! All right, so it is checking to make sure that those characters, for some reason, it didn't really care one way or the other about the period. But if I come down here and I open it up, it's always instructive to open that up. And um, you can see here that this is the output that my program generated, and this is the output. In fact, I can expand this a little bit here. Um, and you can see this is the expected output. Okay? So if you compare the output that our program picked, kicked out as opposed to this you can see that ah yep forgot that e so i need to go back in here i'll add that e back in and probably take the cap off um, 
I'm not totally sure whether it's uh, paying attention to uppercase or lowercase. I'm not sure how they wrote those tests, but let's go ahead and it's always good to just try and match it up. So let's go ahead and run the check now. We should be good on both counts. Looks like everything is good. You'll see down here I have a submission button I can submit and get 100% for that. It says, hey, you know what, just to confirm, you got 100% on that. Do you really want to confirm? Send all those in and click on confirm. And there you go. And that assignment is done. I can close that back down and um, get back to my dashboard. So there you have it. That's how you can, or what you do when you want to get into your mind tap and start playing around with those exercises. Be sure if you have any questions or anything behaves itself weird to get with me. <clears throat> Another thing that's really important to note that I can actually go in and see uh, your code, but there's a caveat. So um, for me to see the code that you've typed in, you have to actually submit it. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to submit it, even if you're only at 50% or 75% or whatever, and then send me an email and, and tell me which exercise you want me to go look at, and I'll go look at it. Now, here's the really big caveat. When you submit it, and again, you can kind of take this as many times as you want. The problem is, though, that when you submit it, you lose all of your work that you put in there previously. So... What you want to do is before you submit it, if you think, hey, I got I want Velas to take a look at this thing, go ahead and copy all of your code and put it in a file, like in a notepad file or something like that, and then save it. And then submit it, send me an email, say, hey, John, can you take a look at exercise 2.2? I can't figure out at all what it's trying to tell me. Um, and I'll jump in there, I'll take a look at it, you know, and nine times out of 10, hopefully, I'll be able to help you out on those. We'll figure them out together and, uh, and I'll get back to you uh, on that in one way or another. But uh, like I said, make sure you save your code so that if I say, hey, you know what, you, you know, you put in 2.55 instead of 2.54, um, it was just a typo. So go back there and then change it and you'll be good to go. So make sure you save your code so you don't have to retype that. All right. As always, uh, good luck and get with me if you have any questions.